Hey, my job this morning is to introduce our speaker today. We have a leadership development program that's running at the moment, which we've got four young adults going through an eight-month program. Axel, who's bringing the word today, is a part of that leadership program. He's also part of our Young Ads community here. He's an amazing guy. He's got a word that the Lord has put on his heart for us today. So I'm going to welcome him up here. Why don't you put your hands together for Axel? All right, brother. Hello. I'm going to pray for you. Welcome. Can you stretch out a hand, church, and let's just bless this guy this morning. Father, we just thank you for what you're doing here today, Lord. We thank you for Axel. We thank you for uh, the preparation that's just gone into this word, the things that you've put on his heart, but more so who you've created him to, to be. I know that this word is, is a part of him. It's what he lives and breathes, Father. And so right now, we just invite you, Holy Spirit, to come and speak your truth into each one of our hearts. We pray for fresh revelation, Lord, and we just bless Axel as he brings a word this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Um, I cannot tell you how much of an honour and privilege it is to be up here, um, especially among the kids. At first, <laughs> Dan called me and he's like, I've got a speaking opportunity for you if you want it. And I was like, oh, I'm stoked. I'm so excited. And he's like, it's going to be a kid's takeover. And my pride immediately was like, sick it's cool it's cool but <laughs> God convicted that real quick he was he reminded me that you know we are meant to come to him like children you know and then I see all this faithfulness up the front and it's just such a blessing to be surrounded by um, and I couldn't think of a more blessed time and actually a better time to be with um, with God and be able to speak than with the children and I love the fact that they're in the room and they're here you know not only being partakers, but they're also the ones actually sharing with us. They're the ones that are actually blessing us just as much as we have the opportunity to bless them. You know what? So I just find it amazing. I find it amazing. It's such an honor and privilege. I want to shout out to the rest of the young ads that were just leading worship as well. Um, Zeke did an amazing job on MD. That was really cool to see him leading. Same with Abby as well. And all those young singers, I don't even know who they are yet, but I just want to honor them, lift them up because they're so cool. I know Evangeline, she was amazing. You killed it. Wherever you are, you did really well. You did well. Both of you. <laughs> um, all right. So, as you guys know, my name's Axel. Um, I haven't been coming to Hope for too long. It's been about six months, I think, now. Might be pushing into seven. Um, every second's been a blessing. It's been such an honour to be here. Um, such an honour to learn from Dan, from the whole pastoral team, from anyone that serves, from anyone that walks through this building. I've just felt so encouraged by it. So I, this is why I feel so honoured to give something back that God's doing through me, the way he's about to speak through me today. So, the kids have been learning about worship. So at the centre of it, in honour of that, that's what I'm going to be speaking about today. I'm really excited to be speaking about worship. Um, the way I'm going to approach this is I'm actually going to share it through my life, my perception of worship, because for so long I had worship wrong. Um, and that's what I, I didn't realise. I actually needed that to be refined and corrected in my own self. Um, and it's just in my humanity, really. In my humanity, I was so in, inwardly focused. In worship, everything I did and every way I approached it was I was coming to God about things about me. And I want to tell you today, there is more than that. And if you have that mindset, that's okay. There is no condemnation in what I'm going to be sharing today. This is a place of grace. This is a place of love. Okay? But I'm telling you, there is so much to worship. And it's really important that we understand how to have a heart of worship. Okay? So I'm going to show you guys what this means. I'm going to show you what, yeah, what it means. So... In honor, I'm, if for anyone that doesn't know me as well, I'm studying primary school teaching. I love my degree. I love everything about it. And that's why I was actually, after going through my prideful moment, I was so excited to be sharing with the kids today. I was so excited to be part of this room today. Um, and one thing that you will remember in school, and kids, you're probably still going through this, is that whenever you're looking at something in English or any topic, you're going to go through your who, what, when, where, why, and then often how. That's how you sort of understand a story. That's what gives you context about something. And whenever I'm stuck, just because it's mainly used in a school classroom or a primary school classroom does not mean it's not the best tool to use for myself. You know, so I'm going to use that today. One, so the kids can have an opportunity to hopefully understand as well, but also for us. This is an easy tool to use when we don't actually fully understand something. This is going to provide so much context. 
Okay? So, point number one. This one's a bit obvious, but we're going to cover it. Who we worship. Okay? Who is called to worship. Now, I'm not going to pull up a scripture for this one, but in this house especially, we worship the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All three are one. Okay? If you're new to faith, if there's something that you don't understand, why, how could I worship the Holy Spirit? I'll explain what my brain, how my brain differentiates it. When I'm worshiping God, I'm often thanking him for his provision, and I'm often thanking him for his creation and his grace that he shows me. Okay? That grace and that provision is often done through the hand of what Jesus has done in my life. And the way that I worship Jesus and the reason why I worship Jesus is mainly because it was his sacrifice for me and for him being my shepherd and the person that's led an example for me to follow and see. Okay? And the fact that through his sacrifice, I then had the opportunity to receive the Holy Spirit. And then now I can worship and thank the Holy Spirit for being something that's filled within me and purifies me and refines me every day. And that is amazing because that's God's spirit. And then that full circle allows me to understand that they are all worth being worshipped. Okay? Because they're all one. I'm going to turn to Philippians chapter 2, verses 10 to 11. Now, I'm pretty holy because I have a paper Bible. I don't know about you guys. But if you don't, it's a bit tragic, to be honest. Um, not really. It doesn't matter. God will use whatever to edify. Um, cool. So, I'm just going to read from verse 10. And sorry, I read from New King James. I'm a bit of a New King James head. But that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And this last bit's important. To the glory of God the Father. Okay? So what I'm getting at here is I'm saying now we know who we are worshipping. But who is called to worship? I'm telling you, it's every single person in this room today. Worship is not restricted to Hardy killing it on the drums, or Zeke playing guitar, or Abby singing her guts out. It's not that, okay? Worship is for the person that sits in the corner of the room and feels like they can't sing. That doesn't matter. It's called to the angels and the beasts up in heaven. They're calling out to Jesus, the saviour of the world. And it's called to everything underneath as well. Okay? So what you want, I want you guys to understand this. Everyone and everything that has breath. That's in Psalms. Everything that has breath, praise the Lord. I really implore you today. If you don't know what that looks like yet, we're going to get there at the end. I'm going to show you what that looks like. But I want to encourage you today. It's so important. It's what we're called to do. Okay, while it is a choice, we're still called to do it. Okay, so point number two, why we worship. I was going to leave why till last, but I found that why was actually really important to set a context for everything else that I'm going to say. Okay, but to put it simply, why we worship. In every moment and every circumstance, God is worthy of our highest praise. Okay, we worship him. Because he is holy. What I want you to understand is so often the only time we worship is when we're here in this building. For some people that may be a thing. I'm here to break that chain today because there is freedom and understanding how you can worship outside of a building. Okay? What I want you guys to know is that we are called to worship God before a situation happens during a problem and then after the situation okay but regardless of all of that that's not the reason we worship we worship him beforehand for he is holy and there's a difference in that that's a different mindset that's a different perspective okay there is moments and times absolutely there is seasons where we are called to call out to him where we worship him because that's our last strength that we can lean on and he's absolutely going to hear that. And he's going to hear your praise. He's going to hear your pleas. He's going to hear your cries to him. Okay? 
but that's not the only moment we're meant to worship, and that's where in my humanity I struggled with that because that was the only times I would approach him. So in my humanity, I would taint the purity of worship, the heart and center of what it was about. So I'm going to go to Revelations. Now, I'm not going to try to explain Revelations, but <laughs> I'm going to read from chapter 4 and verse 11, okay? I recently read through Revelations, and that was, that was a lot. Um, I need to read through it again probably like 50 more times to really <laughs> not get 50% of it, I guess. It's a lot. Um, there's a dragon. That was crazy. Anyways. <laughs> Revelations chapter 4, verse 11. This is why we worship. If the, if, if the throne room of heaven looks like this, how much more should we make it look like this? Okay? You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all, thing, all things, and by your will they exist and were created. This alone is enough of a reason to worship him. This is before he's delivered you from anything. This is before he's provided for you. For simply being created, he is worthy of being glorified and uplifted. Okay? You know, so often, actually, I heard this in a song, on, no, I heard it in an interview with a guy called Jonathan McReynolds. He's anointed. He's amazing. He said, so often, worship won't change anything about your circumstance. It won't. What it does change is you. It changes your heart and it changes your perspective. Okay? It refines the way that you're going to now approach that situation rather the way the situation is going to handle you. And that's completely different. Okay? I find that crazy. <laughs> that same guy, Jonathan McReynolds, I just want to share something quickly. He said, you know, so often I was there singing praises to God. Doing, I was so busy with things. I've been awarded for so many Grammy Awards, whatever it is. And he said, you know what? I forgot to do all of that with God. I wrote all this music, but none of it was with him. None of it was actually for him. And that's very different, okay? I want you guys to understand this. In worship, we are worshiping him. It sounds simple, but I have a feeling in this room some people are realizing. Oh, well, how do I approach worship? Do I taint it with my own humanity? That's okay. This is a place of grace. What he's calling for is a heart of change. Okay? I just want to share some of the things that I worship God for, what he's done for me. I like to worship him to give thanks for deliverance in my life. I like to give him glory for saving my soul. Okay? That's in Psalm 66. I think verse 16 or 17. You can read about it. I like to worship him, to call upon his promises and trust in them, to remind myself of them. I praise him to remember where I fight my battles from, from victory. Okay? This is something I'm going to cling to for a second, but when we're worshiping, sometimes we're worshiping so much for, for a victory. We're worshiping for a way out. We're worshiping for something to happen. But God's actually already promised a victory. He's promised he's fighting for us. If you want to read more into this, I just don't have time to read through it all. But in Exodus 14, 14, it talks about Moses and how he can have peace knowing that God's going to deliver them. Deliver them from Egypt, right? That changes the perspective of then, well, I know God's going to deliver me, so I'm going to give him all the glory and I'm going to lift him up and I'm not going to focus on the circumstance or him delivering anymore. I'm going to focus more on him knowing he's holy and he's going to protect me and care for me. That's so different to worshipping about yourself and your circumstance. Okay? I worship him to, be, to repent and be refined. I've needed that a lot lately. I've needed to repent. I've needed to be refined so much. From wicked thoughts to stupid actions, whatever it is. Worship helps realign my thoughts with the Father's. And shows me his heart. Okay? I worship him to find rest. To just encounter him and spend time with him. I worship him to hear his voice. To listen to what he wants to say to me every day. 
I worship to share with the world what he has done for me. I worship him to put on the mind of Christ and be filled with joy in dark days. And this last one, I'm going to turn to this one. But come with me to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 20. And this is a big, big reason why I worship right now. Okay, I'm going to read from verse 19. From verse 18, sorry. Knowing that you are not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers. This is why I worship him. But with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, He indeed was foreordained, that means chosen. He was chosen before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you, for you and I. Jesus knew we were going to have to be saved. And he was chosen as the Holy One to be lifted up and sacrificed, came as humble as flesh for our sins. That alone, his covering of blood, is the reason why I worship him today. That is enough. Before any of my problems, before he saves me, before, no, not before he saves me, before he fixes any of my issues, before he fixes heartbreak, no matter what it is, he was worthy then, before the creation of the world. God, you know, there's one thing I realize in the Bible that it always says his glory is revealed, not created. He's been a glorious father since before the foundation of the world. Is that not insane? Yet we wait for him to do something to then worship him and praise him. Does that make sense? Not really. Okay. We need to stop making worship about us. It's as simple as that. So point three. When and where should we worship? I've got written here, worship is not restricted to the first 30 minutes of church. Understand this is not the heart of worship, okay? This is a great place to be worshiping. In fact, I'm going to read my next point right now. Worship at church is not a filler time we use as a buffer to be late to church. <laughs> worship, this, I'm, I'm, listen, I'm telling you right now. Worship is just as important to God as hearing a sermon. How much of us treat it like that? How much of us come with a heart like that? I mean, I was convicted. I used to be like that. I'm not going to lie. Oh, I don't really like that song, so I'm I'm not really connected with it. You're going to tell that to God when he's asking you to worship him? That's not... When we come with our excuses, when we come with our flesh, and let it be the thing that separates, separates us from being able to worship him, Is the problem the song or is the problem our hearts towards worship? Okay? I strongly believe someone who is faithful and has a heart for worship will proclaim God's goodness just as much as when they're out of church as when they're in church. Just as much as when they're by themselves as when they're surrounded by faithful Christians. And just as much as when they're in the fire as when they're in green pastures. Okay, I'm going to turn, this is a book I struggle to find, to Habakkuk 3, 17, verses 3, verse 17 to 18. Um, if Ben, if you want to come up and join me, that would be really cool. Okay, so this is just to reemphasize that last point, as much as in the fire as, them, as when we're in green pastures. This verse says, that the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, though the labor of the olive may fail, and the fields yield no food, though the flock may be cut from the fold, and there be no herd in the stores, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like deer's feet. And he will make me walk on my high hills. Okay? We have an opportunity 
to corporately praise him together. That is amazing. But what is amazing to me and what signifies someone that can worship in the suffering is when they can raise their hands and say, Lord, you are all I have left, but you are still so worthy of my praise. Okay. I'm going to turn to one last scripture. Let's go to Colossians 3, 16. Now, this is just about what does worship look like? Okay. I'm telling you right now, worship doesn't just look like singing. I understand that. I don't think that means that's an excuse to not sing when you're here. But it just doesn't only look like singing. There's more to it. I strongly, strongly believe that worship starts as a heart posture. It's not a physical action. But from your heart posture, the internal goodness, the external worship of God is the manifestation of that. So what can this look like? Prayer, singing, Dancing, journaling, any prophetic art, conversation. I was thinking about it more this morning while I was getting ready. This could look like Instagram posts where you're sharing other people's testimonies. You know, this could look like anything you need it to. And the reason I strongly believe that is that if you read here in Colossians, I read from verse 16, it says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts, with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. I love verse 23 as well. I'm going to quickly read it. It says, And whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men. Okay. I strongly believe that if Dan's out there in the surf, people should be able to see him worshiping God through that because he's giving everything he has to it. I strongly believe that. If, <laughs> I strongly believe that in the way I drive. I've been convicted lately. If people can't tell I'm a Christian by the way I'm driving, there's something wrong. That may challenge some of you speeders, I'm not saying anything. But in everything, in the way we eat and drink, there's a scripture about that as well. I believe that we can glorify and do it for God. For it's a heart posture first, not an action. Okay, so I'm going to wrap up here, but I've got something written here. It was just a side thought that I was kind of writing for myself, but it says, sometimes worship can be difficult. What I encourage you to do in these situations is remove yourself. Stop making the worship about you. We have a choice to make. We get to choose our hands and call out to our Father. God will never force you. We get to choose to call upon, call upon God to refine our hearts. He will never force you. We get to choose to praise our highest King, but God will never force you. But one thing I need you guys to remember is it's what we've been called to do. It's what we're called to do, okay? So I'm going to pray and I'm going to hand over to Dan, I'm assuming. Cool. <laughs> yeah, Father, I thank you so much. I thank you so much for what you've actually created worship for. That while it can actually change us, while it can do amazing things for us, you've called it for something higher. You've called it for a greater purpose. And we actually have an honour and a privilege to worship you. You've given us a life where we can have a direct relationship with you and hear from you daily. So for that reason alone, you're worthy of being praised. Father, I pray that not only for myself, but anyone in this room, that we would not taint your worship with our humanity and rather that you would remove our flesh and let it be refined away, burned by your fire, so that we, would, may we just may be more like Jesus so that when we worship you, we worship you with the mindset of Jesus, understanding that you are the greatest thing for us. Father, you fight for us, so let's give back to you in the most simple ways. 
Let us just worship you in everything we do. Everyone said?